The next policy is change management policy. <clears throat> uh, let's directly jump on to objective. So a change could be a request, a new request coming from client. Or there may be some kind of activities internally by the team and they want to raise a change request. So there might be a new request for updating any existing uh, features of the applications or doing some kind of database upgrades or operating system upgrades or changing the existing features or functionality coming from client. So this should follow all this change management process. So all these things are as of now generic. The scope it applies to all employees, contractors, third parties, and all, all the assets controlled by the organization like hardware and software system. It could be application database or network or cloud or on-premise environments. So that's on configuration change control. Uh, determine the types of changes to the system that are controlled. So we first determine what is the type, type of change and, and is this required and there is some approval flow. We'll discuss this down. Guidelines. Uh, so change management process. Now, once we got a new project, there will be a scope. Uh, once we freeze the scope on a functional uh, specification document, then there might be any changes uh, coming. It may be a functional change or a non-functional change. So we follow this uh, change request form. So this is a sample form. This is change request form. Uh, this is downloaded from this website. Uh, and you may follow your own templates. So once you once you got to know okay we we need this change then you start filling this change request form and then send to for an approval to the next team uh, so this is change request form we have a request for change id the title when you are submitting this change who is submitting and what application it will impact what is the department function is it a major change minor change or an emergency change so there might be an emergency change we need to so there might be some kind of uh Vulnerability that is exposing example client information or customer information. We need to fix it urgently in production. So there may be an emergency change there. So some other description here. Is it a business risk? What are the business risks? Uh, so we may document some other security risks. So we have change advisory board. They look at this change and they try to approve it or may take some more uh, inputs from the team. The root cause analysis, why this change is happening. And then at, at the end, all sign and submit if this is can be accepted or we need more time or it is rejected. Okay. So coming back to change request for change request policy, we have seen the change request form now. Now once this is done, it, it will get submitted and we have the change request log. It it will be kept as a central tracker. Okay. We have a change request log. Now, we have a flow here. Now, the change might be coming from internal team. Example, as a part of our company policy, we do a 2VAPT uh, or vulnerability analysis and penetration test on the client's application at least twice in a year. So, during this process, during this internal exercise, there may be, uh, we need to apply some kind of fixes uh, for the application. Now, this is an internal change. For this internal change, we request to client to review the documents and need of change, and then we go ahead. And external change may be client is requesting some kind of changes uh, changes to their uh, existing features of the applications, or might be they, are, they found some uh, vulnerability in the system and they want us to fix it as soon as possible, or they are looking for some modifications of e uh, existing features. So there we have external change. Uh, so these documents, it's already open here. So if it's an internal change, if you see here the change requester and the company, they are shown in the same color. So this part is taken care by internal team. So they initiate the need of change. 
and they perform technical, functional, and uh, performance impact, impact analysis, and what are the efforts required. And once this is done, uh, it goes for level 1 and level 2 approval. So level 1 approval, it may be a management approval. So let's say the management team uh, of them, there are two management teams here. One is from internal team, internal company team. So they may be here. And another may be from security team. And the next management team would be client management team. So as of now, uh, our our guys did example secure cyber gate company. They did all perform uh, all technical, functional, and business impact analysis, and they are okay. So they will proceed with this step. Okay, they will share the details of this analysis to the client team, client project management team, and they will again on their basis of cost they will check okay if this change is required do we have some other project dependent on this timeline or uh, is the security analysis good or do we need to consult our internal security team internal mean client internal security team and they will take decision if the decision is no then it will go to again to this form finalized change request form so again uh, this company needs to take a look why it is rejected and then again take a decision now, if uh, this is going good, then issues, they issues a change request. So, if a change request is issued, it will go to, it will go to the client's approver. The client's approver uh, will check with the internal management team. Okay, what is the decision? Is it impact in costing, timelining, or what are the security impact? So, all the documents which were shared by internal team, they will again go back to. The, the client project management team and they will share the details with the client approver and this approver will then decide either we can go or no go. So this may be two levels of approvals from client team as well. So if they are proceeding with the change then it will go to system B. System B is they have to issue a purchase issue of purchase order if any cost is involved. Okay and if this is internal if there is no uh, cost involved then they directly go to finalize the change request form and update the baseline document and implement the change request. So this is how internal change request would work. Now this is a change coming from client. Now the client requester, client re is requesting any change. They will do their own internal need analysis. Okay, we need this change or not. And then they will share it with the company now the company will do technical functional or security performance impact analysis and once it is done they will share the details for level one and level two approvals and once they're okay with it again it will go back to the client team now this team may they will check again the cost and timeline uh, security and performance uh, details shared by the team and they can do their own internal analysis on this and if it is, uh, if they are okay with it, they will go with the system A. Now, system A is the client approvers. The client approver now will take the decision. Okay, either I'll approve this or I'll reject this. Once it is approved, they will issue a purchase order. As this request is coming from client, so it would be a chargeable activity. And then they will finalize the change request form and update all the thing or patch all the things and it will end here and if it is rejected there won't be any kind of next items or there might be some kind of future uh, analysis if they want to implement this change or not now this is on to internal and external change uh, this flow usually depends from company to company how you follow it this is just a sample one now coming back to our change request policy now, once you have a good to board decision from a client uh, and internal team, okay, you're good to deploy the changes. So we need to follow some kind of change request deployment process. Uh, so we have this change request deployment process here. Now, let's say we have uh, three environments. One is development, one is UAT, then production. So there may be a, um, a multiple environments depending on company. So they implement the change first on development environment. They do a functional regression test 
uh, security test and performance test, and they take a decision uh, whether to deploy or not. So if they found any new issues as a part of regression, they will try to fix it and then they proceed for deployment on UAT. Now if it is approved, it will come to deployment on a UAT environment. They again test the functional regression test as well as non-functional like security and performance test. And if everything is good, they proceed with deployment and production. In production, we don't do a detailed testing, just a high level quick sanity testing on production to ensure the features are working. So this is change request deployment process. Uh, and this may depend on company to company. This is just a sample one. Now, another thing here, we have emergency change request. Now, there might be situations like in production, let's say customer details are visible and this is a vulnerability and someone is actively exploiting this. So we need an emergency change request because other customers are affected. So example, we want uh, as a quick as a quick remediation ex action, the client have taken down the production server and they're asking us to fix this immediately because that's, uh, this change may affect the other customers. So for such emergency changes, so it may go directly onto U80 then production. So this process may change from company to company. For emergency change requests, team may skip implementation or development and directly implement on UAT in production. So this is just, uh, they skip some part of process to uh, expedite the deployment process on production. So this is an emergency change request. And under policy, we have to document this emergency change request plan as well. The other stuff like employment training and awareness, Complaint and monitoring, escalation matrix, exceptions, policy review updates, and other conclusions. So all this remains the same. So do let us know if you have any feedbacks on this change management policy. Thank you.